All right, this next section is all about the mole and chemical equations. And what we're going to do is we're going to study something called stoichiometry. That's S-T-O-I-C-H-I-O-M-E-T-R-Y. And really, this is a fancy word for the study of mass relationships, or even mole relationships, in a chemical reaction. And for many students, this is really, really challenging. But I will say, if you're good at doing unit conversions, this really isn't that hard. However, if you're still struggling with unit conversions, now is the time to go back and watch the supplemental video that I emailed out a little while ago, where we did unit conversions using Avogadro's number and the mole. That's going to become key. So let's just make a note here. So note may want to review. Sorry, that looks like a U. Unit conversions video with Avogadro's number and the mole. That should be in the YouTube video playlist, but really stoichiometry is just going to do more of the same. However, in order to do this, we need to first start with a chemical reaction. So let's take this chemical reaction. I'm just going to take methane. That's natural gas. Most of us have that in our homes. Um, and then we're going to react this with oxygen. Again, oxygen is just a gas. And the byproduct of this reaction is carbon dioxide gas. And then, believe it or not, it creates a fair amount of water. All right. The first thing you need to do before you do any stoichiometry is you have to balance it, right? And so we need to put in these reaction coefficients in order to make sure we're not gaining or losing atoms during the process. So when I look at this, I'd check and I'd say, well, one carbon on both sides, so carbon looks happy. If I go and look at hydrogen, though, over here I've got four, over here I only have two. So I'm going to go ahead and double this side. That way I have four hydrogens on each side. Okay, so I've got hydrogens taken care of. Now let's go to oxygen. Oxygen over here, I've got two. Over here, I've got two plus two. So that means I have four, so I must have a two in front of here. The other ones are going to be assumed to be ones, so we don't necessarily have to include them. And I did want to have a reminder here that these reaction coefficients are super important. So reaction coefficients tell you the ratio. for a given reaction. All right, and this is going to become key with stoichiometry. But when we look at this, what this means is for every one molecule of methane that reacts, we have two molecules of O2 reacting to produce one molecule of CO2 and two molecules of water. But we need to know this. Without balancing this reaction, we're going to get the wrong answer. All right, and I'm going to copy and paste this over just for the sake of time. But here's the type of flowchart that I typically like to start with. It looks pretty familiar to um, what we covered in the supplemental video. But if you're given the mass of something, you can convert to the moles by using the atomic or molecular weight, right? And then the reaction coefficient can convert you from moles of one thing to moles of another thing. So for example, if I put in two moles of oxygen up here, I should get only one mole of CO2. That's a two to one ratio. So that's where these ratios come into play. And then once we have the moles of B, we can get to grams of B by using formula weights or molecular weights. All right, so let's take an example. All right, in this example, we're gonna look at a little animal called a kangaroo mouse. It's a really fascinating animal. It lives in the desert. And I actually pulled up a picture of it. Here's what he looks like, this little kangaroo mouse. Doesn't look super impressive, but it has a incredible skill. It can survive without drinking water. 
It doesn't prefer to do that, obviously. However, it has a really cool survival mechanism. And the survival mechanism involves metabolizing glucose, which is really just sugar. So C6H12O6 is glucose. So as long as this mouse continues to eat sugars that contain glucose, it can react this glucose with oxygen. This is just cellular respiration. And in the process of cellular respiration, this little mouse will breathe out carbon dioxide. And the byproduct of this reaction is water, which is kind of cool, right? So the water the mouse needs to survive is actually produced in this reaction. I'm going to leave out the solid, liquid, and gas right now just to keep things uncluttered. You can include those if you want. But the one important thing I can't stress enough is we need to bounce the reaction. Okay, so first I start with carbon. I've got six here, but only one here. So what I would do is put a six right here. That way I now have six carbons on both sides. So now they're bounced. And I go to hydrogen. Got 12 here. Oh, but only two here, so I need to multiply this by six as well. That way I've got 12 hydrogens on both sides. So we need to multiply it to get the correct bouncing. Then the next one, I've got six plus two. I've got eight total oxygens, right? And then over here, I've got six times two would be 12 plus over here, whoops. I've got six times one, which is just gonna be six. So I've got 18 oxygens on this side. So clearly the oxygens aren't bounced. But what we can do is we can multiply this O2 over here by six. So now we've got 12 plus six, that's gonna be 18 and 18 looks to me like everything's bounced. So sometimes you just have to guess and check for a while in order to get things to bounce out correctly but it looks like we have everything bounced for this reaction. So like I said, this mouse can basically eat sugar, react it with oxygen by breathing, and then it exhales CO2, but this byproduct of water is what it survives off of. So let's figure out how much water we can make. Okay, and here's the example situation, is how many grams of water can be produced when 25.05 grams of glucose, which is C6H12O6, is metabolized. And we're going to assume excess oxygen, right? Because we know that this mouse is going to be in an environment where there's not going to be a limited amount of oxygen. All right, I'm going to give us some cheats, though. I'm going to figure out the molecular weight of glucose first. So add up the mass of six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens in order to find the molar weight. So what that means is one mole of this is C6H12O6 should weigh 180.16 grams. All right, and then the other component we're gonna be working with is water. So I'd say one mole of water is equal to 18.02 grams of water. We've practiced this a fair amount, but make sure you just go to the periodic table and add up the number um, of elements and their corresponding masses, and you should get to the net value. All right, so now let's go ahead. We know that we're starting out with 25.05 grams of glucose. All right, but we wanna figure out how many grams of water, right? So we need to first cancel out our grams of glucose. All right, and if I look up here, I could say, well, I've got grams and glucose right here. And then on the top, I've got moles. So what I would do is I would go ahead and I would say, well, the 180.16 is gonna be paired with that, right? So the number and the unit are paired. But then on this side, I would say, well, one mole is gonna be on top. 
sorry, this should be a 12 down there too. But by doing that, we've canceled out our grams unit and now we've got our mole unit. Okay, but we don't want moles of glucose. We want to figure out how many grams of water. So we need to do a conversion to water. So if we look back up at this flow chart, we'd say, well, this is where the equation coefficient comes in, meaning the ratio, right? So if I go ahead and I look at this, I'd say for every one mole that we put in, we would get six moles out, right? So one mole in, six moles out. So let's use that as our ratio. So again, I want to cancel out moles of glucose. And we want to start working with water, but it's going to be a ratio, meaning we have to keep the same units. So I'm going to do moles on top too. And we said we get six moles of water out for every one mole we put in. So now we can cancel out moles of glucose and we're left with moles of water. All right, but we don't want moles of water, we want grams of water. So let's cancel out moles of water. And let's figure out how to get to grams of water. Well, over here, just like before, we can use the molar uh, mass, which in this case says there's 18.02 grams of water in every one mole of water. So I want to make sure that 18.02 is with the grams unit. So I'll put that on top. And I'll put one on the bottom with water. And now we've canceled out moles of water like that. And my final remaining unit is grams of water. Perfect. So now we can type this into our calculator. And it's telling me that we get about 15.03 grams of water. So pretty cool trick by this little mouse to take sugar metabolize it not only for energy right because that's how um, our bodies run is we we convert chemical energy into biological energy but the byproduct water is actually used to sustain life so kind of a neat trick by this little mouse all right i hope that makes sense i know this takes a lot of practice i would encourage you to try to go through book problems a part of the way you get good at this is to simply sit down and kind of rack your brain over some of these problems. If all you do is watch me in these videos, it might look nice and easy, but come an exam or a quiz, you don't have the problem solving skills to know how to struggle through one of those problems. So it's okay to be uncomfortable. In fact, um, if you wanna email me, I'm happy to help you out. If you need to talk with a tutor, that's great, but struggling is a part of the way we learn and it's better to struggle in practice than it is during a, a more stressful situation like an exam or a quiz. All right, good luck studying and let me know if you have any questions.